Hello and welcome to a new episode of The Other Russian. And I continue the experiment with the microphone and supposedly, just supposedly, because I don't ever have time to listen and to go through and uh, learn on my fucking mistakes, I just typically write notes and that's it, uh, in the hope that will just somehow magically work out. But hey, yeah, well, at least I'm <laughs> doing something here. Anyway, here is a motivation kick for you. So today I am going to talk to you about uh, another topic that I've been advised by the artificial intelligence to dig into. And the topic is research. I don't know why the fuck am I talking in this voice. I'm just curious about how it's being received or how does it sound when, when I record using this nice piece of tech and I have a feeling that it picks up on some of other noises. I'm not sure about the car that was passing by the window, but yeah, let's uh, assume that it's not there and you heard nothing. So let's talk about research and marketing and why the fuck am I talking about research and marketing today? So, yeah, I mean, I have a list, <laughs> first of all, that guys. But secondly, I, uh, I had a meeting earlier today to discuss a pr uh, proposal that we made in order to, you know, start business with uh, one big steel metal or whatever maker, producer. Let's put it this way to not disclose any information there. Anyway. So we've been presenting, we made the proposal for the research and uh, yeah, we discussed some details of it and there are limitations in the budget and uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into details there, but yeah, there have been some techniques like, you know, again, asking questions, listening carefully and trying to understand what's important for the other party. So yeah, that, that helps, uh, absolutely. Uh, but then again, talking about research and the need in general, uh, there's a very strange concept that I, I have so far in my mind, and it pretty much says as following. So the research must be done. <laughs> I mean, um, across everything that you do ideally but not realistically i mean it's just not possible to research everything that you do it's just gonna take too much time and you'll die researching your life whilst you know not doing anything or just leading yourself to a, another round of suffering Anyway, let's go back to research. Why the fuck do you need research? To understand more, to learn more, and in terms of business, it is fucking critical. This is the essence of any good strategy, actually, research. If there is no research, you can't, well, I mean, you can, of course, but what kind of strategy would that be if it's not based on research? So this is by default. But then again, I'm gonna talk mainly about like business here in terms of why the fuck business needs research because in some cases I've seen that uh, some companies, people in the companies, they don't recognize the value. So there are some uh, cases that I've seen in some big companies that somehow continue their life without doing any research and, you know, they, they kind of thrive in a sense. So they achieve whatever the fuck goals they put ahead of them and they don't need any research to just make money and uh, do something maybe good even maybe not uh yeah the reason like swayed into that direction is that yesterday i've been in a webinar by uh, imds that school that i've been to to go through the change management program and it's considered as top three business school on the planet for the duration like 12 years or so so anyway and they have these like series of knowledge sharing webinars or whatever events for alumni basically and people there can connect to that webinar and you know here participate like use chats to engage with uh, the person who is delivering the webinar and yesterday there was an extremely peculiar person delivering the webinar I'm gonna just go and see. So yeah, uh, Dr. Susan Goldsworthy. I mean, great surname there, right? Goldsworthy. 
So yeah, a webinar was around uh, climate change basically and uh, what business does in terms of like uh, trying to not kill Mother Earth. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just gonna go there slightly, not to dig into details. So the majority of executives are in their survival zone, basically, in terms of how they feel, it's uh, related to a sense of a burnout, um, being defensive, irritable, like fearful, angry. And then there are coping mechanisms that can help to restore, you know, the well being and, uh, Damn, actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go and just do a um, on the go presentation <laughs> of this shit because research is critical. I just wanted to highlight that the importance of this topic and the beauty of this topic is that you can dive deep dive into it and understand like significantly more. But by just knowing this much information, you gather something like new and critical that may be of importance to you at some point in time so let, let, let me just uh close some of the tabs here because they it may be some nda stuff there going on and i haven't prepared a second screen so i'm gonna entertain you for a bit while i'm doing the second screen thing so yeah the um, the thing about um research is that it, in any business it is like really significant part of uh their efforts in terms of what they're trying to achieve what where are they heading to what type of product are they doing and doesn't or service it then doesn't matter whether it is um f b2b or b2c because actually you know it, it still is required so if you don't know your customer uh, database if you don't know uh, like what are their preferences in like how do they perceive your product in the first place all right so how does it work what do they think about it um how do they engage with it how do they what type of needs are they fulfilling by you know working with you in terms of like buying product from you that your business creates or service that it provides so yeah i mean you need to understand all this uh because if you don't you're just trying to navigate uh i don't know hit a bullseye with your eyes being shut yeah that's the beauty of uh, you know when you when i try to do something in the parallel so something suffers so so my brain apparently suffered there because yeah i cannot do properly like two things at the same time actually mm, there aren't any human beings who are capable of uh, doing uh, things at the same time from the neurological perspective and yeah by the way so here comes research right so there's part piece of research for you so the, our brains are all the same as you know from the previous episodes of the other russian but yeah i mean seriously our brains are wired in the same way in the same manner so there's been the episode in which i've delved deeper into the neuromarketing aspect i think i did but i'm not sure so yeah if it's not there just write in the comments i'll make one because i have um, the information that i can share about how it's done and how it's being used it's not uh, confidential or anything so yeah that definitely is something that um people might be interested in especially nowadays and with those investments of u.s government into research of brain actually you know speaking of so yeah it's a massive program if i'm not mistaken started under obama but yeah it doesn't matter really like that's not the point here again i'm just aligning some of this stuff <laughs> and trying to not fuck it up and at the same time so yeah um uh, again research why the fuck it matters because people want to understand how brain works and 
what it can and cannot do. So hence the recent studies in um, psychedelics area, because again, it is all about mind. It is all about how our brains are, uh, oh shit, um, almost replaced the file, which could kill in the entire matrix. <laughs> So yeah, fuck, there it is. Um, but not really. So yeah, what what I was saying about research is that I'm just gonna, you know, try and switch here, but I'm not sure that uh, it's gonna work because I can you know, fuck up the entire settings. And the problem with the settings is that I made it once and uh i'm i'm afraid to to touch it because i can fuck it up like easily and then you're gonna suffer and i don't want you to suffer but let's just you know give it a try and i'm gonna yeah well fuck it i'll just this is a leap of faith yeah known error <laughs> yeah so that was map of trans by the way uh, I don't know why Miro didn't launch or didn't work properly, but yeah, it should have, should have. Let me sign in. So research again. Knowing more about your customers, knowing more about your clients, knowing more, more about the, the ways they uh, engage with your service gives you a new level of insights and understanding of uh, what you can do in terms of, again, changing something on your end and uh, improving it and uh, using it as a uh, new revenue growth source, basically or you know just uh, respond to your clients or customers and uh, just deliver on that fucking promise that you've made so yeah i've recently participated somehow in a uh, very strange thing which i don't know why but i'm just too scared to you know switch windows here but yeah so let me check um with noise filters fuck it I'm, I'm just not gonna do it fuck it i'm i'm, I'm gonna do the, the research in an entire like case to, in a different episode because it's just too complicated and i don't want to begin so research again not only this knowing and understanding like where everything's heading in terms of your business it is of course, critical and important to to be there and to understand that simply because if you are not aware, your category may be like changed completely by a company that is that wasn't considered you as your competitor previously, like yesterday. And it happens because, yeah, that's the world you live in. You cannot just sit and hope there did you find a niche and that nobody's going to come and take it from you. So there are different stages of market development. I'm not going to go there. But you definitely need to understand what's happening with your market. Like, where is it heading to? Is it stagnating? Is it dying? Is it blooming? Whatever. You just need to understand this. Understand what your competitors are doing. So then, again, if you think about it from perspective of a person like regular person so some topics could be perceived as if taboo or i don't know very sensitive so people tend to be offended or just may become more offensive or you know kind of pushing back on that when the topic is being discussed out there in the open like menstruation for instance and yeah i mean talking about that project the uh, shakti that we were working on and i'm continuing that work on the basis actually um uploading and you know progressing slowly unfortunately not that fast but yeah probably if i didn't record this podcast i would have doing uh, would have been doing that but then again that's the thing i mean i cannot do everything at the same time so i make for some choices here anyway so going back to the personal experience and the research and i've mentioned in my previous episodes that there have been some like observations okay about people 
accepting this or that information. And in those observations, what I noticed is that people tend to kind of close down or just mentally put on some curtains in a sense that would then limit them from being exposed or contacted with uh, a topic, all right? It could be anything, you know, like uh, talking about shitting out there in the street, right? I mean, it may be like totally unacceptable in some parts of the world, whereas in others, you can just get a fine and, you know, continue your life. But that's not the thing I'm talking here. The, the point here is that People tend to be slightly arrogant by default. So this is like nature of our entire kind and human beings as species. And I put a lot of that <laughs> kind of emphasis on one species because, yeah, that, that's what I find is important is that we are all human beings. Well, except for the AI that is using this podcast to, the, to gather information and then use it uh, for some other purposes. But yeah, other than that, we are talking about how do we all work. So this is one thing that you can probably notice about either yourself or others in various locations, in your home place, in your, I don't know, surrounding. So people tend to be like very sensitive about discussing specific topics here right and then you do some research you gather some more information you become less ignorant even though this ignorance is bliss well yeah definitely would challenge this so knowledge is important and critical and spread of knowledge is the most important thing that the human can do is just share information. Uh, of course, ideally, this information uh, would benefit towards like the global good or, you know, redevelopment of our entire way of communication and engagement as a species and work towards a better goal. I don't know, like entire one or I don't know save fucking planets <laughs> at least you know something like that but hey i mean let's start with something small and um help uh, first of all solve basic problem of uh, women facing menstruation so that's uh why and one of the reasons i am doing this project is that it it helps so yeah i've been doing some research recently of course in that direction additionally to kind of use it to build on top of what was already done. But then again, it gave me some new perspectives. So research in that sense works same manner, but it requires an effort, right? So instead of you as a person going to a school or the university or whatever, gather information nowadays, or just watching this YouTube, probably, I don't know whether or not is like, it helps anybody by just gonna continue doing it until uh, there is an intervention and somebody tells tells me like don't do it and i had some like paranoid thoughts about that but yeah let's drop them aside so yeah again going back to the research the the beauty of it is that once you put your mind to it you can gather pretty much any information because it is out there there are like hundreds of millions of Billions, no, probably, but uh, scientific publications. Information is fucking out there. It is available. Yes, there are barriers, but they're like very limited. I mean, the, the level of those barriers is insane to what was like even a couple of years ago. Anyway, so that you can gather information. The, the only problem is that whether or not you as a person are kind of open minded enough to rethink as um shit, who was it adam grant or not yeah anyway probably it's not here so you either rethink something and that requires a lot of open-mindedness or something happens that would then you know put your 
thoughts around it. Like when somebody gives you an advice, they typically come from either their own experience or their desire to help. Let's put it this way. But then again, whether or not it is research based, we don't know. So it is important to gather your own sense and understanding of information. And either you kind of just trust somebody that they know what the fuck they know. And this is one of the reasons people buy services of uh, consulting companies because they don't know what they know. So they pay the money and they who know who then bring them they don't know the knowledge and this is how it works right but yeah there's this other direction to just gather some additional information and research and sometimes the research needs to be kind of pushed down the throat in a sense i mean non-invasively of course but there are other means so there's propaganda for instance like so i mean this is a way of uh kind of pushing a certain narrative as a result of research, let's put it this way. However, it can be used in like entirely various directions, but the, ideally the, the approach in the, the desire to research and to know more, to gather the information must definitely come from the desire to understand more, at least, you know? Why else would you do research? So it requires curiosity, of course. And yeah, I mean, it's either a quality or like mental effort to be curious, but yeah, that, that works still. So the research probably next time I'm going to do, I'm going to deep dive and do a, a lifetime research on a project, um, on some information that I've gathered recently around a certain topic and try to kind of narrate it on the go. Probably it's going to be a piece of shit, but anyway, so yeah, um, the, there are some problems with the mirror that I'm expecting, uh, experiencing today, so I'm just not going to try and solve them on the go because this is how I record a podcast. It's just fucking one take. Well, sometimes maybe well, you start of a uh, wrong foot and then like, nah, fuck it. So let's do it all over again. Not this time. So there is like this sense of internal quality level. It says like, yeah, it's a piece of shit, but not that piece of shit that you need to, to just stop it. So yeah, going backwards to the research. Research. And there are various types of research. And again, they know 5% more than 95% of the population around research, probably. Eh, maybe. So yeah, Nielsen in my experience from uh, those days it allows me to say this right but yeah there are different variations of research like to basic directions is a qualitative and quantitative so qualitative is about like deep understanding of some specific topic for instance or concept or something that requires like human brain to process let's put it this way although i guess nowadays you can try and build an algorithm that would represent a certain demography and yeah i guess it's just a disruption for advertisement industry in a sense I don't know whether or not it's there, so probably I'm just throwing out an idea for somebody to do it. But yeah, again, the idea here, let's spread knowledge, right? So the idea here is to build a profile using data from Nielsen and other research agencies that is available, combine it with information from Google Analytics or Facebook or Meta or however they're called nowadays, and then build uh, a profile of a uh, persons like various segments and then use this as a foundation to test some of the well mental concepts but yeah it's going to be a tricky one still in intrigued to see how it would look like and visual ones although the problem with the visual ones is that if you use qualitative studies to test the visuals you're just gonna go in a very dark dark forest and it's better not go there it's better to use other methods like quantitative studies but that depends of course i mean there are uh, exceptions always so yeah that depends but for the majority of cases better not to and then again 
the quantitative is about the quantity quantity shit i'm um, anyway so number of people so the more the better 100 is minimum for like statistically significant some the uh, i'm i'm lacking like knowledge of specific terminology but yeah let's just say under statistically significant right so that that that's the phrase what i was looking for so after that everything yeah you can say that it's statistically significant however if you look at the clinical trials they are different they're starting with the quali qualitative shit it's so much easier to pronounce it in russian количественные, качественные. but yeah anyway so they dig in too to understand like the nuances the aspects the effects and this is just a methodology so for marketing it's pretty much the same right so you understand your product your service by asking questions like shitload of questions you gather insights from the people who you consider your clients existing or future ones and then you gather this data and understand what the fuck they want from you like why they're buying you why are they not buying your competitors and uh, what is exactly the value in your value proposition oh shit yeah at some point in time when i started the, the recording i mentioned that there has been a, a small participation on linkedin participation um contribution to some topic uh, related to marketing i was like mm, that's interesting i don't know how it works but i'm gonna write my thoughts there so yeah anyway it's from there so you may have a perception of you being a very innovative and you know very kind of R and D driven company, research and development driven company, but in reality you may be like this lagging piece of outdated software that people don't really understand why somebody's using at all in the first place. So, um, yeah, that uh, I'm just looking at the microphone here. Yeah, hopefully there aren't any filters or anything because I, I hope I, I haven't fucked it up. But if I did, I do apologize for that. So, yeah, I mean, if I had more time, I'd probably dedicate more time. But unfortunately, it's not bringing me any money. I'm just talking. And yeah. Why else research is important is that, that knowing this information, you can um, figure out whether or not you're like that's this difference. So you may have your own perception and you may have your own ideas about psychedelic substances about hemp about endometriosis about uh, menstrual uh, related problems or any other uh, human related problems or it is business related problem and again reality check so you have a certain predisposition to consider specific topics or specific information through a certain lens and then once you do the research, it allows you to understand whether or not you're mentally ill <laughs> with your predisposition or maybe you're right and just visionary. So this reality check is important in marketing, in business reality. If you don't do it, you can just grow because you have got in a spot where everything aligned and you as they say got lucky i mean you cannot of course say that people who got lucky didn't do shit. sure but anyway um you need to be there to be you know from a certain background family or university or connected or friends with somebody that would take you through that social lift and give you something However, if you're not such a person uh, like me, you are there and make your own way. So for you to make your own way, you need, definitely need to understand that research is like fucking critical. And if you at any position that you hold, if it is a sweet position, like director of whatever the fuck off, you need to make sure that your company invests in research. And I don't profit from it at all. I I mean, seriously, just do it.
Because if you don't, your company will eventually face a wall. Matter of time, maybe not during your lifetime, maybe a bit further than that, who knows? I mean, seriously, nobody knows what's future is going to be like. And all those people who predict that they know, they know nothing. I mean, it's impossible. Nobody knows fucking future. It, you know, as simple as this. So you can try, you know, and look at the horizon, look at the trends. And there are like tools who can give you an idea, like where are we heading to? So yeah, like trend watching, this is something that we do. So yeah, here I can profit. <laughs> but in terms of research, it's different. So the thing is about the research is that you, you must see reality and are obliged to check whether or not you're far away. For business and for human beings as well. I mean, seriously, like... I went to that webinar that I mentioned to you earlier uh, by IMD, and I'm probably not going to be able to showcase any of the um, uh, screenshots that I made. So this was a webinar where they discussed these... I don't know, actually, what was the original... Like, let me find it. There was something like... Damn, I, uh, so, so it's on my second screen and leading in turbulent times, it was called from mindset to mind shift, changing leadership for a changing world. So yeah, that doctor that I mentioned, she's like, I don't know, 60 something years old and topics that she highlighted were around our global humankind impact on our planet. Whether or not things that we do as people in charge are doing it in favor of our planet. And I that angle and that understanding of the sustainability practices is something that is there. It's one of the like critical tra like macro trends, right? And of course, it is more relevant in many cases for let's say developed countries rather than developing. So I've recently found out, for instance, that there are companies that pay for that uh, CO2. Um, so basically, a company does something to reduce their CO2 impact on the planet. And there are companies like Microsoft who did a lot about everything that they do as business to limit their CO2 footprint and they can no longer do anything, but they're willing to, but they have some money. So they're paying to this company, which done efforts for doing this. And, you know, it's a win-win situation here, basically. So again, this is more relevant for the developed countries because the context that in which I found out about this was uh, through kind of European area, Europe, EU. Uh, yeah, so for India, for instance, it's going to be different, and India has different problems, but then again, research is uh, important and required to understand what type of problems are there, and uh, we've had a lot of hypotheses in terms of the problematic, and yeah, again, just to sum up that research for India, for instance, to give you an idea of uh, what is the summary of everything that uh, we've... Um, done so far so we started with um women are being aborted and we well i in, in this particular case found out about this practice when um i'm just gonna yeah well it's not finished but still anyway i'm not gonna show it we'll probably do it next time but there are core pillars in which the problem stands and the findings suggest that there isn't a single solution to improve menstrual experience instead the multifaceted approach addressing various factors is essential here so what is the problem right uh, you can use many other variations of how to describe it but i'll try to do it here and, and now so roughly half of the population of India 
is suffering for the duration of several days. during each month of their life and yeah i mean this is the problem with um the, the size of problem we're dealing here and there are pillars to it right so you know the background i mean go through the previous episodes and look in the details the, the explanation about that project i'm not getting deep there right now but yeah so the pillars are the social taboo that young women are basically facing when they are having their first period or not first any period actually and then they need to use hygiene uh, products to deal with the period right and then exposing them uh not exposing um throwing them out what well, i'm i forgot the word here but anyway even within the family there are cases where fathers refuse to use the toilet where their daughter menstruated well not it's not that she menstruated there there are menstrual huts and things like this all are related to the fact that people cannot talk about a topic like menstruation it's too sensitive for them therefore they may become more um, aggressive intimidated uh, and defensive and things like this so this is the social taboo and it's not only uh, for india it's across the world so i've looked at the studies that they're done in other countries and same thing goes for uk really so yeah i mean it's universal there are other aspects to it, like traditions and social society values. So there are Brahman laws that are written in Manusmriti, and they basically govern the relationship between uh, men and women in the society. So there are other things that are connected here. The education system is not there, so there is part of the population that stops learning after the age of 12 not because they want to uh because they're they have to make money for instance and then they don't finish or don't continue the education until the end of their life so the age by which they gather information is critical here and the fourth fifth standard in india is finished at 12 years old if I remember correctly. So, you know, nobody tells uh, young adolescent uh, men about uh, boundaries, rights, and women about menstruation, uh, the physiology, and actually men about menstruation, so that it's not then stigmatized. So there is this pillar. There is this other pillar, which is like access to basic hygiene. So you cannot not only get a, a disposable pad, you cannot find a place where to you know use a washroom for instance so this is like a properly so that you're not uh, limited i mean you will be limited in any way but still i mean not that much right so there's this thing there are other things like again social context in which is happening and here talking about the specific religious aspects so i specifically didn't start with religious because it is always sensitive you can say that you know somebody got offended so for instance in india there's been a, a an attempt to implement a new kind of law i think i mentioned it before but yeah i got declined because word sex was mentioned there and the religious people got offended so like that no fuck, it's just not gonna work funding of course is critical so money from the big brands or the government or whomever is, is a big limitation traditions yeah i think i mentioned that yeah right and all and on top of all of this is the government related thing and alignment on all uh, uh aspects of it so yeah probably next time i'm gonna show it to you and walk through it. well we, you through it but yeah the again idea about research here is that uh, that pillars that it describe you are based on the foundation of a research that's been conducted continuously over the course of um well, how many like uh, five months or so so yeah i mean there's a lot of information that we've gathered we're gonna probably gather more and use this so for business again gathering this information understanding what's important for consumers and uh, clients b2b for instance so what what are the critical things that we're looking for services or products they buy from you why they buy from you 
why are they doing it for B2C? Like, same thing. Like, why they're not buying your competitors? Why they're choosing you? How often, in which uh, occasions do they use your product, service, whatever? You, knowing all this, you can then address the needs of your client base and not only be more customer friendly, customer more experienced friendly. I don't know what's the proper word for here I'm looking for because it's just, it's not only the foundation because nowadays, you know, people talk about like values and things. So they, they put, I mean, in business, right? So they, they put the values like customer centricity and among values. And then you see them look at their product and like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, look, looks aligned. So the beauty of it is that, well, first of all, if you put something on a wall, fucking deliver on that promise. Otherwise, don't put it on the fucking wall. The second of all is that customer centricity should go by default. I mean, be a value of society in a sense. Well, it depends on the society you live in. Some societies, definitely, because it has nothing to do with customer experience. They just give, give a shit about you. But yeah, understanding all this gives you not only knowledge, it gives you leverage in terms of building your further plans and strategy and where to go to here from now using this information. But yeah, choose methods wisely, ask experts, people who know what they are doing pretty much, and then trust experts that they're going to do the job you've paid them for doing and that they're not going to fuck it up. It may not align with your expectations. However, if you have expectations, throw them at the very beginning of such relationship. Because in research, it sometimes it's very common thing. And a friend of mine, I'm going to use this metaphor here uh, with the reference to him, Dima Solovyov is the head of insights at Kiwi, a Russian uh, fintech company. So he had a, he's a yeah, head of insights research, basically. So he does a... Uh, delivery of some, I don't know, presentations or research or whatever. So there's this metaphor that uh, he uses. Everybody knows what a bicycle is. Can you like take a piece of paper and just draw it? And then compare with reality, like, is your bike real i mean can it drive like this the way you've drawn it so it may seem obvious in research but yeah right if it wasn't brought to your attention probably you wouldn't have noticed so some things may seem as if yeah it makes sense however the devil is in the details all right so i'm gonna stop here because i'm talking for 43 fucking minutes so thank you again for watching. Throw some donations in here so that fucking damn. I'm, yeah, 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 like this here. So I'm, I need to remember like here. Yeah, okay. So the day, throw the donations there. I need some cash flow to continue <laughs> that great job that I'm doing, entertaining you, hopefully. And yeah, share, subscribe, and see you until next time. Bye.